We have a guest in the studio. He is the Member of Parliament for Mogotio constituency. His name is Ruben Kiborek. Good morning, Mishmua. Good morning, sir. Welcome to Kenya's biggest conversation. Pleasure is all mine. That's the hot be, seat yeah. of the situation, Ruben. <laughs> <laughs> I can yourself. feel the heat. <laughs> <laughs> you can feel it? I can feel the heat. Eh? That's it. You know Mogotio? Yes, sir. Um, as I was growing up, it was very famous in the Moi era. Yes. For that auction. And the whispers. And the whispers. It is still very famous. Uh -huh. It is still a republic in its own. A republic in its own. A Mogoti republic. It is a republic inside a republic. What do you mean? It is a. It is a. Is a destination. It's 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 just a great place. It's just a nice people. It's you feel. It's a communal. It's a Mogoti is a Mogoti. I cannot explain. I no, you sell Mogoti, but you are telling us to come and visit Mogoti. Sell it nicely. We still have our goats. Uh -huh. They have multiple. So first of all, the goat auction. There's yes. the Mogoti goat auction. Oh, it's, it's also Mogoti. It's Kimalel. Okay. Neighboring. It's yeah, called Kimalel goat auction. The Kimalel goat auction. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, we have good people. We have good... and We have like Bogorias inside Mogoti. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a gateway to the magical Baringo, mm -hmm. the land of diversity. Mm -hmm. The gateway. There's only one gateway, and that is Mogoti town. Mm -hmm. When you get to Mogoti town, you have entered Baringo. You have entered Mogotio Baringo. is a border town. Mm -hmm. uh, Mogoti has... I think has the highest number of professors per square inch. Inch. You know, <laughs> per square inch, <laughs> and doctors. <laughs> it's a home of scholars. It's a home of business people. Mm. It's a home of very hardworking. You know, uh, you know, Toyo is from Ogoti, right? Born and bred. Mm -hmm. uh, Amy Koske. Mm -hmm. You know, I can mention a few. You know, in the in the in, in your industry. Kiprono uh Gitoni -huh. uh, is from Ogoti. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have Professor Twitter, Professor Ambili. It's great. It's home of greats. It's home of the greats. And it's home of the greats. Mogotio constituency. When you well, talk about, you know, Baringo, people recently have been hearing Baringo, you hear insecurity and the insecurity in Baringo. Is Mogotio affected by this? You know, Baringo mm. is 11,000 kilometers square, the size of entire Nyanza province, mm. from Kisi to Nyamira to Oma Bay to Migori to Siaya. Kisumu to Siaya. Mm -hmm. That is Baringo, 11,000 kilometers square. So, Baringo, we have arid area. We have islands. We have semi arid. It's when you are in Timbaru, when you are to Eldore, you are in Baringo, Eldamaravin. Mm -hmm. When you are in Majimasuri, on those side of Mumbares, you are in Baringo. But people, when they hear about Baringo, they paint a picture. Yeah. There's a cattle rustling. This uh, cattle rustling affects the constituencies. But when one part of us is bleeding, the entire house is bleeding mm. because, as I told you, we are brought brought up communally. You know, by former president and other leaders who came before us, mm. Baringo South, Baringo North, and Tiachi have the brute of have seen the brute of banditry and cattle rustling. Mm. But for Mogotio, Baringo Central, and Eldama Ravine, they have not. But they feel the pain our brothers are going through on that end. Mm. So it's a it's a it's a communal challenge. That we hope we'll get solution in this government. But Baringo is a it's a land of great diversity. Mm. It's it's a home of flamingos, home of uh, Lake Baringo is home of the best and sweet uh, the best of potatoes from El Ravine. Is Baringo is the land of you know that magnificent road, road towards it in, I think yeah. you've seen it. Mm. It's a brilliant place to it's, be. It's a lovely. It's a I lovely should take place. you for a trip one of these weekends. It's a lovely place to be. I've been in some to them, some parts there. How's it now with the security operation? The security operation is not yet, it's not yet as, you know, as what we imagine it will be. Mm. We hope they are still setting foot. We, ho we hope they are still learning the territory. They are familiarizing themselves. Because this is a situation where as much as we put pressure on the government, it has been a over 40 years problem mm. that it will not take two or three months or six months to get away with it. Mm. It needs some time. And that's because... We are, we, they have to come up with a solution, with a formula to 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 weed out the banditry. Uh, the banditry menace is it's very deep, and uh, you know it's it's far from one reason to another. It's not a, you can't blame just bandits. You can't mm. blame just government. It has to be in between one. It is it affects six counties: that's Baringo, West Pokot, Turkana. Samburu, Laikipia, and maybe Siolo also. That Elgeo Marakwet. Elgeo Marakwet. Mm. Ours is a unique, the same challenge you are facing. Mm. Now the problem is, 
there's a lot of guns in the hands of civilians a lot mm -hmm. And you know, a gun is uh, it's in discipline. When you have a gun, you feel in discipline. You feel you can overrun everyone, mm. Mm. especially being illegal one. Mm. Uh, without training, you know, training. When police are taken to training, they just don't train them to shoot. They train them even to to modest their behavior and mm. to to carry themselves as police. This one don't have training. They just get a gun. You are trained to shoot. Mm. No, to, there's no any discipline into it or mm. any any doctrine or any whatever into it. So. The first thing is, when we have been asked the government, is first to protect our boundary. We have a very bo porous boundary with Uganda, with Ethiopia, with Sudan. That today, we are pushing for disarmament. If you disarm Turkana, they will be raided to tomorrow by Toposa from Sudan. Mm. They become vulnerable. You know, the first thing of this gun is for, for protection. Mm. Yeah. It's for defense. Everyone who wants it is for defense. When they get in surplus, they use it for aggression mm. when you take from pokot turkana will raid them tomorrow mm. so the first thing is to protect the porous boundaries then pick the guns because there are too many do mm. disarmament and in this case i don't think there's a peaceful disarmament it has to be as it is mm. because you are dealing with indisciplined people who feel they are in, invincible they they feel they are greater and bigger than the government mm. so disarm the whole area without fear or favor of any or favoring either regions when you disarm them the now monster and house is development this area my brother has been left out you know this this is a serious challenge with our since we adopted the railway line mm -hmm. development until devolution came which governors again did not use the devolution for the purpose it was intended to they use it to milk the, those counties and make money mm -hmm. you know those security places they say we have done a road they know no one can go and audit even you cannot go and audit it my brother mm -hmm. uh, my sister you cannot go and audit mm -hmm. so they put on paper that we have the road has road been from done. a to z but when you go to ground there's nothing so the second thing after weeding out these guns and doing the summer minutes to do development open up the area one what mm. is the problem what mm. do them balls do them pandams two the problem some areas don't have police station and you know you get like tiati for example in baringo it is 4500 kilometers square yeah it is the size of was an issue and transoya combined or like i can tell you the size of maybe nyeri mm. muranga and 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 kiambu combined yeah, yeah one constituency so and maybe it has one police station and Kenyang. Mm -hmm. now how is that a serious deliberate measures to put more police station because if government is not felt people will become indisciplined yep. the nature of a human being is to be indisciplined it is the government and the law which <laughs> brings us to <laughs> which, which contains us and the, and, and the bible mm. and, the, and the bible or quran mm. when you become religious it contains you from the excesses of a human being mm. so do police station, do roads, do water, do electricity. When we do that, the area will open up, there will be more opportunities, there's mm. me. People will be lazy. You know, education has a way of making people lazy. You mm. cannot track for 50 kilometers, you feel, why should I not use a border border? Why <laughs> take people to school. So it's a challenge that the president needs to come, call these leaders, all of us, read a riot act. To build a school, you don't need national government. Yeah. You have CDF, yeah. go boot school there. To, to build a police station, we have CDF code to a, a police station. The president should now actualize the equalization fund and other funds mm. to bring up some major projects to that side. The, by so doing, the development will change. You know, it's like when Mzungu came to Kenya. He used development, Bible, and some brutality, Kidogo. <laughs> we became a bit decent. Mm -hmm. So it needs, uh, we have to, to, to send our churches to go there, not Shakahola ones, mm -hmm. uh, Gen AIC, Catholic, PCA, those normal churches, to go and preach to the people, mm -hmm. talk to the people, confer the souls, e you know, minimize the excesses of human beings, mm -hmm. do roads, water, that kind of development now will open up the side for it. That's a long term do solution. You think, do you think that de development is then, I mean, I'm just hearing you say, yes. development then could be a solution to the conflict that we've been seeing for the last 40 years yes it is but first you have to bring law and order mm. you cannot take development without law and order the first short term is to bring law and order take guns because even if it remains in the hands of the band they are not raiding cars they will raid shops mm. 
mm. because a thief is a thief you know a, a thug is a thug and not all the people are, are, are bandits there but these bandits who have made it you know it's like al shabab they have even chief cannot mention because they know they'll come for me mm. they have run their own so development is a solution there's no the permanent solution is development because the, why are people descending in kiambu it is development why are people in akuru descend it is development why are people so vulnerable in turkana it is development because when there's no development people all these are affected all these are affected and you know and you can take even our journey as a country there were more in discipline cases mm. in the 1940s 1950s 1960s the more we become decent the more our excesses are reduced to you know as excesses in terms of thuggery stealing killing maiming it's reduced because people become decent go to school how soon should people start seeing this development because now the security operation has been ongoing for what now two going to three yeah, months i saw the security operation doing some roads mm -hmm. which i said this is the, this is the way to go i so saw the, them opening up some roads the, the 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 security the military i saw them so it should happen simultaneously, simultaneously as they yes. are doing yes. this we yes. should start seeing yes. roads yes. being constructed yes Uh, dispensaries yes, yes. hospitals Now, schools again, that's what police president, stations mm. president should not take this burden alone mm. and uh, carry it in all the leadership from governor mps because everyone has a kit mm -hmm. which can uh, which can point to this direction dispensary the president should not do he should talk to governor governors of this region the liberty to do dispensaries yes should, uh, schools it should not be the school the cdf you should talk to them piece of this area that we are not seeing the schools of the money you have been receiving you know uh, in terms of roads it should come in to assist but the county government should also do something so mm -hmm. president should call leaders from this region that this is the direction i want to take this is the direction we should take as leadership is our responsibility all of us from mca to mm -hmm. myself let's do something guys but that wasn't that the understanding from the very beginning even during campaigns that uh, forming this group it was clear some of the things that we are speaking about now that he should do now is some of the things that he was very clear about that we would do he is an i mean and it was also assumed that everybody then who joined in in this knew the direction that it was going to take it just seems a bit odd that we would say now the president then must remind governors or must remind mcas or remind mps what you promised kenyans that you were going to do before they voted you in president and the governors and the mps and the mcas are not from the same party mm. they are reading from the same script and they are different manifesto mm. the governor of Turk the governor of Turkana is an odm and but we have a responsibility a human responsibility to get we do rid of this cattle wrestling and bandit as leadership respect everyone will go to his party after this less mm -hmm. you know he should call them for a unity of purpose okay. that look guys you come from party x i come from isiolis you believe and you know samburi is uda call all of them and tell them forget about your parties for this less myself i've chose to go this direction and he asked because i've seen i've seen roads been open up i've seen security presence of security it's, it's, it will take time but he should not walk this journey alone he should force these leaders in the affected areas to walk the journey together with them with a the budget he knows because he cannot tell them we don't have money he knows there's money or not he should tell them you know pandams these people should not quarrel over water if it's a pasture the probably let it be rain not water do bowls i'll also push I'll, let's do a matching fund mm -hmm. if you do six bowls i will mobilize resources for another six bowls if you do five roads i'll mobilize resources for another five roads if we are uh, if we join that in that direction and push development in that direction the area will open up so why is that not happening uh that's what i'm saying because just two weeks or three weeks ago the president was, the, was with the leaders from this area at a thanksgiving service remember in west pokot you see this problem is and they have met before they have been meeting so why is this talk of what we are doing all of us together you as governors from the six <laughs> counties you as members of parliament from the six counties we as the administration and all the county commissioners and the others below them from the six counties this is a plan now when we were elected we were, we were invited for a meeting from that those six counties mm -hmm. at the deputy president's office yeah. we had a talk which uh you know this is a historical there's a historical beef between these communities like some are like palestine and jewish to be <laughs> honest with you <laughs> that uh, <laughs> they take community x is our god-given enemies mm. and when the president is in turkana the leaders from community z doesn't come when there is a leadership when, like in west pokot mm. those from turkana they don't come when he's in turkana those from west pokot doesn't go so the issue is president has 
maybe chose to do it by himself because mm. one is opening up the schools which were closed is doing the roads but i am that's why i'm saying the new speaking as a local mm. as someone who has in the brute of this thing he should walk this journey with you forget even about some of us who are not directly affected those leaders who are directly affected by this thing he should walk with them and tell them you know this thing let's do development in this area deliberate it should and it's something that we are reaching out to make sure that all these leaders and presidents sit down and mm. decide because everyone might be doing in a small bits but not you want to be a united front Collective. that we are doing this we are attacking yeah. this as a as a leadership mm. we have our difference but less of the, the issue of, of 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 infrastructure schools water uh, electricity power and so forth roads like for example do boarding school along the border uh both the students from both communities they cannot fight they cannot keep, they cannot, they cannot run, attack uh, they cannot attack the school because their children are also here there mm -hmm. another thing another trend that is you know speaking as an insider the most aggressive bandits are those born by intermarriages why i don't know they are the most the children born out of intermarriages between the communities are the most aggressive the most fierce of these bandits so i don't know why it's like a super bandit having been created i, I think so i think there's some blood <laughs> <of super>. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so there is some level you know this a, a breed Mm. The intermarriages produce the super bandits out of it. So I don't know how we'll do with it to, because I thought intermarriages will have remo reduced it, but thing. it is opposite. The opposite is happening. So <laughs> they are more, they are more lethal. They are more aggressive. Uh, you know. So the and best, they attack either side. No, you know we are paternal. So they choose. We are nihilists. We are paternal. They choose the father we don't, side. They don't, we don't even choose. We don't even think it's, of choosing the other side of the pater, of the, of the paternal side because mm. we are nihilists. As nihilists, we are paternal. Mm. So we go to the side of the father. Uh, we never associate with the side of the mother in terms of ownership mm. and the community pride. We belong to the father. So they never go to the other side. We are in this side of the of the father. So it's it's the only thing is to to do development and do disarmament. Bring law and order and do development. It mm -hmm. will, it will get, it will, it will, it will disappear. There's been proposals that uh, the military <coughs> be deployed there permanently. Mm, I have made have, it. have uh, permanent bases. I personally made the, the remarks sometimes back in a function which went viral mm. that we should, you know, we should not even even deploy, relocate the security training comes into to those places. Like we have here in CBD, mm. AP Training College in Nairobi and Bakas. What does it, what, do, what purpose does it serve? With rationale, with Nairobi, which is being congested now and then, why can't we move this thing to Samburu? So that even during the pass out, we'll be going to, you, you have never been to Samburu, I'm sure. If you have been to Samburu, maybe once in your lifetime. I've been to Mogote. Yeah. But Mogote is Nakuru. Mm. Mogote is, Mogote <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> but you have not been to Tiati. Uh, if today we take the Ashtu, Mm. and the structure training college to Tiati. During, base it there. Base it there. Mm. During the recruitment, pass out the parade of the recruitment, maybe you have your cousin, your niece, or you will go there. You will know mm. how Tiati look like. Mm. But, you know, children from Tiati and other side of the world have come to Nairobi to do University of Nairobi, University of Eldoret, University of Kirinyaga. But now we have not gone to their side mm. because we, it seemed to them coming this way is coming to Kenya. There is no traffic going to that side. The mm. traffic is all pointing towards the railway line. So we must deliberately relocate. Even 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 the RTS in Eldoret, mm. the training camp. What does it serve in Eldoret? Take that thing to Turkana, or take it to West Pokot, yeah. where there's big land. They can do the. You know, they go and train for six months in Eldoret, and then they are taken again to Isiolo. Mm to do the infantry or what they, they call the training the shooting and whatever they mm. do it in solo or they come to loruk in baringo they don't do there so we should take a we should take a because the land is so big relocate completely relocated to those sides of the world mm. where you know you take someone to train in eldoret and maybe 18 degrees area then you take him to, to somalia to fight 50 degrees yeah. environment yeah his biggest enemy is the environment. It is not the enemy he's going to face. <laughs> Train them in an environment that looks like a war zone, that you can send them to Pakistan tomorrow. And, the, and, and the, the mission we are sending our military about from DRC is predictable. You'll send them to Sudan, mm. send them to Somalia, send them to, you know, Libya. Train them in an environment that looks like Libya. When you send them to that mission, they understand the environment. Mm. You are sending these people to, to, to protect our porous boundary. 
the moment they get to Kibish or Liboy or maybe Elwak, they start asking for connection to come back. I want to go back home. You know, you know, you yourself, you have your cousin, you want to go back. Because the environment is unbearable for them. Because they train in Kiganjo. And maybe they're not they, used to it. They're not used to it. Train them in an environment that look like. And we have that. The, the good thing with Kenya is we have, we have, we have multi, we have different kind of environment. Mm. Our ecosystem allows us, if you want an extremely cold place, go to Limuru or Chimbarua. If you want 45 degrees, go to Mandera. If you want 30 degrees, you can go to Baringo. So go and train them in Turkana. Go and train them in Loruk or maybe in Samburu, where it's 38, it's been 35, 32, they can survive anywhere. So, but training them in an environment, and because we found them colonial doing that, we say this is the right thing to do. Because the reason is we found colonial doing it. Mm. And you found them training their house to in Gilgit. The reason was they used to live in Akuru. In Naivasha, those white white islands around the Rift Valley and Central, and they had a lot of cattle, so they needed the training to train their to guard their, their cattle. cattle. But there's no cattle nowadays in Naivasha. Mm. Take them to Nginyang. Take them to Turkana, where they can really exercise the... They can train and train the way they will be working. <laughs> they can get the reality. Even when someone is going to training, he knows I'm going to train in Turkana, yeah. I'll work in Turkana, mm. it's okay. His mind is prepared for that. Mm. But you think someone train in Eldoret, then send that person to Bandera the next week. Mm. Struggle to fit in they the will environment. Not, they'll not fit. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day.